You see him? I gotta go on the other side of the tree. Get his front, get his back. Ah, there we go. He's got it. The guys are in Puerto Rico. There's nothing like Florida. <laughs> Oh, yeah. To help remove invasive and dangerous reptiles, they encounter swamps crammed with caiman, lizards falling from trees, venomous snakes lurking in jungles. On this island paradise, anything can happen. He's about to nail something. He's got the wrap. Oh, all oh, right. Sweet. Invasive reptiles threaten Florida's wetlands. Oh, oh, oh. Iguanas, Nile monitors, and the most notorious of all, the giant Burmese python. Snake, there's Snake. a berm right there. You got him? Oh, yeah. Now three men join forces to defend the Everglades. Biologist Sean Heflick. He's been chasing, breeding, and collecting reptiles his entire life. I've never been afraid of snakes. Exotic reptile breeder and cop Greg Graziani. He knows his pythons inside and out. I got my first Burmese python when I was 12 years old. And python breeding pro Michael Cole. He sold his designer color mutations for as much as $25,000. I've learned about reptiles the hard way. It was a passion. They are the Python Hunters. The Python Hunters are in tropical Puerto Rico, keeping their reptile radar sharp. With their expert guide, Ivan Alfonso, they're watching endangered boas snatch bats in midair. Oh, 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 all right. Woo! Wow. Ah. Yeah. Sweet. That'll slide down like an oyster. <laughs> the Culebrones Cave of Arecibo is home to six bat species, 300,000 bats in total. Biologist Bert Rivera Marchand is a bat researcher. That's, that's, that's amazing. All right. So All right. Bert, we're going to be setting up this. Yeah. This is the harp trap. We're going to try to catch a couple of bats here. Take a second. With this trap, the guys can monitor the health and varieties of the bats they catch. Special licenses from the Puerto Rican government allow them to handle any animals they encounter. So we set it up like this. Now we just wait. Whoa, wait look there, at them. You, look got, at them. you got one. There's another one. Oh, wow. Look at the nose on that thing. That is killer. This is a nectar feeding bat. This is an adult male. The brown flower bat feeds on plant nectar, fruit, and insects, and is the most common species in this cave. They hover like a helicopter. I mean, they can actually take off um, straight up vertically, hover around, and change directions, in, even in mid-flight. Usually hard to catch because of that. What you got there is a nose leaf. It's used to, to direct its the sound it emits to echolocate. Bats emit high-frequency sound waves that rebound off obstacles in their flight path. The returning echoes steer them away from head-on collisions, but can't protect them from the Puerto Rican boa. I just love these little claws, man. Feel that. Look at that. You can dig right into the fingerprints. You can just see through that membrane. So fragile, but it's pretty tough. And look at the hand. These are the fingers, and this would be the wrist right here with yep. the thumb coming off. There's You've got forearm. the forearm coming down here. Elbow. It bends up right into the shoulder where the wing goes right into the furry part of the bat. Guys, we had 300,000 of these flying past our heads. Yeah, that is incredible. Look at him, he's just tucking up. Boom. Very cool. Right past my bats. face. That is awesome. I'm a reptile lover, but bats are just, just as cool. These bows are, bows are said to bask on that ledge up above in the mornings and that. I'd really like to come back and just explore the bows a little more in the daylight and also just to go into the cave system. I haven't been in a deep cave since I was a kid, so I'm totally with that. Yeah. The hunters are impressed with their first venture, and there's more to come. How are you going to top this? I'm going to certainly try. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> Let's black this feet. place out. For their next adventure, Ivan's taking them to Vega Baja 
to troll for Puerto Rico's largest invasive reptile, the spectacled caiman. I think Mike and I are gonna just take a back seat on this and just let you and Greg get maimed. No, wait a well, minute. No. Hey. I'm gonna watch and learn, and then I'm jumping one. Hey. Caiman are dangerous animals and need to be handled with great care. The guys hope to catch a few tonight and put a dent in this local problem. If we catch a large caiman, you have to follow directions. So the guy dealing with the caiman is the guy in charge on each scene, so you don't have to figure out, well, who's in charge. Caiman are nocturnal hunters, so the guys head out at sunset. It's rumored drug dealers filled this swamp with caiman to keep visitors off their territory. Whatever the reason, they're here, and they'll eat anything they can swallow. About 15 minutes, we should be good. During the day, the caiman's brown eyes, camouflage scaly skin, and bony forehead ridge make them virtually invisible. But the pros know how to find them. Their eyes reflect light in the dark. They can mess up the ecology of an island like Puerto Rico because they do not belong, and they are apex aquatic predators. They will displace whatever predator is at top. It could be a three-foot fish that is filling the niche of apex predator, and then a caiman moves in, and then you've got a problem. Not only do you lose the smaller fish that these guys are eating, but they eat the three-foot fish that's the predator. Spectacled caiman reproduce once a year. Because of the tropical climate and lack of predators, they're able to thrive in Puerto Rico. Yeah, back up, back up. <laughs> yeah. Aka. There's one right there. Aka, aka, aka. Right there, right there. Right, right there. there. Get your light on it. Get your light on it. Slow. Right there. Right there. Get it. Get it. Got it. Woo <laughs> hoo! <laughs> What? <laughs> Godzilla. Look at that little speck. This is the menace of Tortuguero. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> that just sounds horrible. That one's not very big, but they grow up to be big, and they do a lot of destruction around here. I want you to know that their bite of something like this is not that big a deal. Put your finger in his mouth. He's so, not even trying to so, bite. So when you go when you go to snag him, it, there's no worries. You know, th these guys get a reputation of just being like man eaters and super aggressive and everything. But I mean, I'm just putting my finger right in there, and it doesn't seem to be a problem. It's nah, the size, though. Not even that. Spectacled caimans are not known to eat man. They're not known to bother man until man lays their hands on them and does something stupid. That is this year's hatchling, which means guess what? They're there's, adults out here. Adults out here. And those are the ones I want. On that note, let's bag this bad boy. I think I got a bag. <laughs> and let's go I want to see you do that with the next one. All right. I don't care what size it is. Yeah, guaranteed, no matter what size, it has to go in that same bag. All right, boys. Let's, let's, get, some. let's get some. The hunt is on. You saw, I think, right off in front of those weeds. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, yeah, up under that tree. Cutting through the, through the weeds. Right there. Sure. Yep, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yes, 100%. We lost our angle. Get over here, get over here. There, right there. Slow, slow, slow. Quick, second, quick. Get him! Got him! Got him? Yep. Got him? Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look. Oh, he's bigger than Look at that. Really? Got the record so far. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is four inches long. His is six. <laughs> My first wild came and catch. First wild came and catch. Right there, baby. <laughs> let's, All right, uh, let's bag him up. Throw him in the bag. We got bigger fish to fry. You know, them bigger ones are a little smarter. These babies are sitting up for us. Mm -hmm. We got a hatchling and we got a yearling. Now we need a mama. Right there, right there, right there, right there. I saw the eye shine twice. As soon as you took your light off of it, there was a ripple. All right. All right, slow down. There, I got it, I got it, I got it. He's moving. Get it, get it, get it, get it. I got it. What do you want me to do? Tape. You got tape? Real quick, in behind my palms. Run it. Run it up a little higher, run it up a little higher. Gotta get it started. Run it up a little higher. 
Mikey's taping his eyes closed. <laughs> Higher toward my hands. Towards his hands. You're going the other way. There you go. <laughs> I, got I haven't you. done this before. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Right side. Two. Can we get the leg. Can we get the leg. I got a back leg. Yeah. Look at that, Fab. Ah. Got it. You go. Got it. What do yeah. you think, Mikey? I taped it. <laughs> Sexy. Hold Give on. it a finger. I bet male. Oh yeah. You got the penis? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a boy. A little closer, Mikey. <laughs> it's a boy. See these little just dots? All the little dots right there are sensory organs. These sensory organs are called dermal pressure receptors. They allow caiman to detect slight changes in water pressure to help them locate prey. You now, Put your hands on it? <laughs> yeah, I would. Come in, just come in beside me. So right there, right on his ear flap, drop your thumb. Replace here. Push on the left hand, not on the right. I can tell you from this position right here, I ended up with 27 stitches in my hand from an alligator. Thanks for that great story while I'm standing here holding an alligator's head. I'm gonna show you something. You see that tooth? I didn't see that before. Taped or not, mouth closed. He'll slash you with he that. He will slash open. your wrist open and you'll bleed out. More than six dozen large conical teeth make the caiman's jaw a giant clamp that holds its prey while ripping it to shreds. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys caught him? You guys carry them. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. When I saw that big male all ass up on land, I was like, oh, yeah. You yeah. made a mistake, man. Yeah. Good. Good stuff, guys. Good night. The next morning, they head out for another hands-on opportunity. Only this one's a little closer to their hearts. We're gonna go rescue somebody from a loose snake. Puerto Rico is jammed with reptiles. And everyone knows the python hunters are in town. So it's not surprising when they get a call about a wildlife emergency. Yeah, we got the, uh, the whole block out here standing here looking for a snake in the tree. But when the guys arrive, the snake has made its way up a palm tree. Can you see him? That's a Epic. big Puerto Epic. Rican boa. Yeah. I see him. That's a big animal. That's a big one. It's the dark point off the coconut up there. This is the Puerto Rican boa. And this is a critically endangered species. So if we can remove this animal and relocate it to a place that's not so many people around, then this snake stands a great chance to reproduce in the wild. And, and do what it needs to be so we can keep the species from ever going extinct. I don't know whether they're afraid of snakes or they just want to see what the hell the gringos are doing. <laughs> they, they're going to find a, a bucket. A bucket? Yeah. Perfect. Find a bucket. Perfect, perfect. That's what we need. As the crowd gathers, Sergeant Atienza, director of the Division of Wildlife Services, arrives. Atienza. Show. We got a big boa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a crowd of people. Everybody is, is afraid of snake in Puerto Rico. We had heard that, that there's a myth somewhere on the island that if you cut the snake, like if you chop its head off, the two pieces will grow yeah, back yeah, together, yeah, yeah. or they just grow into two snakes and slither off. People said that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody shows up. This is like an impromptu festival. It, there's a big snake, and we're trying to catch a big snake. There goes that. I asked her if she liked it. She's like, no. No. <laughs> She's not a fan. Just then, the bucket truck arrives. Now we're cooking the gas. And the competition begins. Who's going up in a bucket? One, two, three. Ah! Oh, got him both in one shot. Best, best two out of three. I didn't have to be best two out of three. Man. I need an assistant. You two fight it out. I don't assist. That's so it. it's all Mikey. I don't think that when this was new, there was a rate restriction. But <laughs> there I might be so, now. But there might be now. I saw an ambulance go through, but he left. He's not very agile. You better bring that thing back. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on the other side of the tree. Oh, watch the coconut. How much is he charging this family to, to prune the tree? <laughs> Can you see him? I got his tail. You got a hold of it? Yeah, I got his tail. All right, he's coming. He's coming. You see him. He's got him. All right, he's coming. 
He's coming. We'll see them. Got him! Bring him down. Pain him off. It'll be a bite. Look at his front. Ah, oh, oh, there we go. He's got whoops. it. Whoops. There we go. Oh, now we got him. Ah, he got me again. <laughs> ah. Uh, he's he's fishing that. just like for the bass. There we go. Same Puerto Rican boa. Inornatus is a species we had in the caves. He's just a bigger animal. Do they know that, that this boa is found only here in Puerto Rico. Really, instead of being afraid of this, when they see it, they should be honored and mesmerized because there are not very many of these left in the world. Thanks to Atienza and the guys, this scare turns into a show and tell. You're looking at a load of people right now that are around this daily, don't even know it, and they have never even touched one of these in their lives. <laughs> we got a few holdouts. Thank you for letting us share this with you because this is great for us. Now that the excitement's over, this boa needs a safe home. All right, buddy, this is where you belong. Head on up there where you'll be safe. What an honor to be able to release this animal out of a hostile environment in town into a protected forest here in Puerto Rico. It's just it's a great feeling. Awesome, awesome day, man. With Puerto Rican boas, some bats, and caiman under their belts, the three amigos set out to capture the island's rarest and only venomous reptile. We're headed to find the Puerto Rican racer. So this is a species that the natives consider to be probably one of the most dangerous animals native to the island, because it's, because it's venomous? It is venomous. It's just the reaction that you're going to get from the bite, it's going to vary from person to person. It's no different than a bee sting or a lionfish. Um, it could be fatal in someone, but it could be no more than a little rash on somebody else. To find the Puerto Rican racer, Ivan takes the guys to Caja de Muertos Island, home to a famous animal reserve. Mike, you ready? Do it. On docking, they're greeted by a rare native reptile. There goes a uh... big blue amoeba. Don't move. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Puerto Rican blue-tailed amoeba, otherwise known as the Puerto Rican ground lizard, is this island's most iconic indigenous lizard. Wow. This is actually uh, an amoeba exu, which it's actually for the blue coloration that you see on it. That's as blue as I've ever seen one. That's amazing. Ted bobbing at us saying, you're getting in my territory, you need to back off. See, and these guys are actually not swimmers. This is a population of its own. When they're here, they're here. One right here, right here, Look right at this, right here. Right against the wall. <laughs> yeah, good luck. They're fast as can be. We should have brought the net. And the boys are in for another rare treat when they reach the Caja de Muertos Reserve. That is a gem. That is just unreal. You look at how small they are, everything eats these. Hawksbill turtles are named for their hawk-like beaks. They're a critically endangered species. And what they did is they dug up the nest, and they hatch them in captivity to keep them safe. They can't release them during the day. They have to be released at night, so they'll hold on to them until it's nighttime. Once nighttime comes, they can let them go on the beach and they'll, they'll take off. If they survive to adulthood, hawksbills can weigh between 65 and 90 kilos. Yep. Look at the egg tooth, teeny little point on its nose. An egg tooth is a horn-like structure that helps the baby hawksbills cut through their shell. Hawksbill hatchlings. That's that cool. Bad, dude. They're cute. But our guys are on the trail of the Puerto Rican racer. I mean, they're racers. They're hard to find, tromping around they're the not, Everglades we may have caught in Puerto They're not by. joggers, they're racers. That's right. right. The hunters can't find their elusive Puerto Rican racer. We're almost at the end of our rope. I think some chastising is in order their guide. Because when we wanted Puerto Rican racers, I wasn't envisioning a teeny little trail surrounded by eye-poking, nipple-piercing, testicle-ripping, 
thorn vegetation. I must have left that that detail out. Yeah, this is still prime habitat. Any any turn could show a Puerto Rican racer. Ivan and the hunters make it to the caverns at the top of the mountain. Watch out! <laughs> He's got to pee on something in every episode. But there are no snakes. This should be good habitat for the razor. I mean, it's, it's humid, it's dark, and it's actually perfect to attract insects, which attract the gnolls, which is the main diet for the razor. But the razors are, so far, still elusive. We have not been able to see one. But Ivan has a backup plan. The guys head west to Mayaguez to hunt for the invasive red-tailed boa, a species they've come across in Florida as well. We came here to catch boas, and if I'm not mistaken, this is part of the racer's range as well, right? We're here, huh? To help with this snake mission, Ivan recruits Jorge, a local snake enthusiast. I brought you these guys so that you can take us uh, boa hunting. Yeah, we uh, we hear you're the man. I got a, a pretty cool video of a six-foot boa. Um, you got it with you? Crossing the street. You, you have it with you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, we got to see this. Yeah. Come on, man. Look, are you serious? Yeah. Wait, 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 where was this at? Five, five minutes away. Really? Minutes Jorge long. might have footage of a boa, but this day is all about the real thing. We're eager to catch snakes. Let's get to it. And this time, it looks like they're right on target. Hey, boy, look at that. We got oh, snake skin. Look at that snake shit. The boa? It's a racer. It's also You're right, it is. No doubt, look at that head. Yeah, That's colubrid. Definitely a colubrid. That's yeah. a big alsophus. Look at this. Wow, so these things are big. You know, we come across those, we have yep. to watch out. Rear fang venomous. That's four or five four, feet. Four or five foot yeah. long, fast as a devil. Yeah, the literature says three feet. Yeah. That no, that's way beyond three feet. And he shed for a reason, so he's bigger now. <laughs> <laughs> A shed racer skin is a sure sign the real one oh, can't be far. Man, some of this bamboo. Oh, yeah. Look at the eyes. That's what we're looking yeah. for. Ah. Ivan's the man. That's his boy. Finally. Look how laid back it is, though. So, this is the big, bad, feared, venomous snake of Puerto Rico, huh? Does it does have to act it. at all like the racers we have back in Florida? I mean, the book says they're they're fearsome. They're fast. They're flighty. They're fast. They're flighty. They're aggressive. 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 So you can't export them. You can't do really anything with them except seeing oh, them and releasing them. Cool. He looks like he's had a little running right around the neck there. He's got a nick right on the back of his tail here, too. And these guys, they don't have any natural predators, but that doesn't mean they're free of any harm. Just glad we found it. This is all Jorge. That's yours, buddy. That was your sight. I just got yeah. overexcited. <laughs> all right, let's put this beauty back and let it go about its business. Yeah. Check this out. Giant centipede here. These will put a hurting on you. You see it? The bite from these? Yeah. Worse than a uh, venomous racer? Yeah, like way worse. Centipedes use their venom to kill their prey before eating it. That's, That's quick, man. Look at that. Well, that's it. He's going to bite you. Hey, I got an EpiPen, but you get bit screwing around with an insect. I'm not wasting it. There he goes. He's checking me out. Don't flick do it, that. Flick it, flick it, flick it. Sean's being very cautious because the centipede's venom has also been known to kill humans. No, 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 no. He's feeling Hell no, don't touch that one. He's going to bite. Don't do that. Then you go where again, let him reach for you. You're, you're something he goes to. You don't go to him. Very cool. He's calm now. There you go. Their Puerto Rican hosts are wondering what they've got themselves into until Michael finds something a little more tame. Guys, what's this? He's found a white-lipped frog. It's a native one? Yes, that's a native frog. Looking for snakes, man. You guys are over there playing with tadpoles. Tadpoles? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> snake, snake! 
looks like Greg's onto another Puerto Rican racer. He went under, he went under. Oh! You got, him? got him, yeah. All right? <laughs> <I got him. laughs> who caught who? <laughs> That was the most graceful catch I've ever seen. Just sliced my thumb open on that one. These guys are so mellow. Look, he just ate something. Look. Uh -oh. Is he trying to spit it? I don't, it I don't know if he's going to swallow it or spit it. I think he's swallowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's getting farther back. He's yeah, swallowing. Yeah, 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 he's working it down. You know what? We ought to put this guy down and just yeah, let him go about his meal. You were disturbing his buffet. There's <laughs> two Puerto Rican racers that belong here. Yeah. And all the tromping we've been doing for hours and hours, no boas. It is rewarding to find the species that are supposed to be here. Yeah. I mean, I know that we came to find the ones that are not, but finding the ones that are supposed to, it's to me, it's just as rewarding. No, but that's my, but that's my point. It's not the red-tailed boa they're looking for, but there's no shortage of cool species to catch on this island, including the invasive green iguana. Up on the table, the little table, he's climbed up and he's looking oh, yeah, out at Sean. Yeah, yeah. Look up! Look up! Look up! Hey, buddy! He's Boa. coming out. He's coming out this side. Oh, wow. He's going out the other side. He's going to come around that boat. He's, he's coming, coming at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming he's at coming you. He's coming right at you. Right at you. Back. Gotcha! I got him. I got him. Guys, <laughs> that's crazy. I thought for sure you were going to come out with a few less digits. Wow. You're the man, but guess what? I'm the bigger man. One less exotic breeder. All right, Mike, we got a bag and tag this one, so uh, off yeah. you go, buddy. Hey. Got him. Let's go get some food, boys. Let's do it. Some people go to restaurants when they're hungry, but not the python hunters. As Ivan leaves for the day, they head back into the jungle. Sean! Yeah? You're always tell us about the grubs you find. Can you eat these? These are it. These are the larvae of a giant beetle. You eat them just like that? You can eat them raw or you can stew them. Grilled is really good, but they taste like grilled chicken skin with like a peanut oil on them when they're grilled. It's an ugly, ugly critter. What are you talking about? All right, let's start a fire and let's get going. Survivor man. <laughs> this could be there we go. You're like two Girl Scouts that never got your fire badge or something like that. Well, you're doing real good over there. You got half a burnt worm. No, I'm fine. He's toasty. That's what you want him. You want him toasty crispy. Michael's is over ready. Listen to this. Ain't nothing squishy in there. All right. Hey, Martha. So you just grab the head and... You, you go. No, here's the deal. You can't just pop it and swallow it and act like, oh, look at me. You got to chew this baby. But I'm going to tell you right now, that head's going to get stuck in your teeth and it's going to hurt like a mother. All right, well, I'll skip that. Are you trying to make friends with that thing or are you yeah. going to eat it? Wait. Just a little piece at a time, boys. Good cream. Oh, yeah. Make it a little squishiness. Oh, this guy's got a little bit of gut content. It looks a whole lot worse than it tastes. <laughs> yeah. And the outside of it kind of reminds me of a, the kernel of a popcorn. Puerto Rico's teeming with so many critters, it has its very own set of reptile hunters. Hey guys, how you doing? And they've invited the guys to see their facility. Uh-oh, we got snake racks. Yeah. Snake racks, look at this. this and it's filled with everything that crawls and slithers. That's an animal that we use for, the, for our exhibitions, our, our teaching on school. It turns out both teams teach the public the same set of rules. Everything is cute when it's a baby. But the biggest thing we pump is educate yourself. Don't go out there, run out and make a purchase just offhanded. Know how big that animal gets. Know how much you're going to have to buy to feed it. Know how big of an enclosure it needs. And know whether it's going to be potentially dangerous. If you're going to have anything, just don't release it when you don't want to eat anymore. Juan, you've got this this business together where you educate people, but you also have your own. We're standing in your private collection of, of breeding ball pythons. Yes. This is my hobby, and this is what I love to do. I got this nice guy from Daytona 2009. Wow, Pibble. very nice pie nice ball. Excellent. Now, is that a male or female? It's a male. We also call this the short-tailed python. They get about, what, seven, seven and a half feet full length. They're hard hitters, too, at that size. You, you know what they really remind me of? The gaboon vipers of the python mm -hmm. world. Yeah. The strike are so fast, and they used to train the venom people with mm -hmm. those. 
you're going to get bit, but you're not going to die. Check this out. This is something we're all real familiar with. Looks familiar, strangely. Doesn't it? <laughs> Burmese python. While the, the Burmese in the southern tip of Florida and the Everglades are a problem um, for us, there's a chance that someday uh, Mother Nature might wipe them out. These guys start breeding population in Puerto Rico. No berms have been found yet in this fragile ecosystem, but there's one invasive reptile that is. Puerto Rico has a major green iguana infestation. Yep, I'm gonna head out to the car. <laughs> so the wands are taking the guys hunting. All right, we'll follow you guys. All right. Gajina de Palo, chicken of the trees. Have you ever eaten iguana? He's eating iguanas, he's eating guano. I mean, he can pick it up, he probably puts it in his mouth. <laughs> Don't eat that. Cold-blooded iguanas use airport runways to bask in the sun. That delays planes from taking off. But most of the time, they end up as roadkill. You know, the stories, they definitely were a problem here for these guys. There are so many iguanas, officials use patrol cars to clear the runways. Let's go find an area where they are a problem. Yeah, let's go catch something. They head to the lush jungle surrounding the airport. All right, so we're here. All right, this is a good area? Yeah, definitely. We're going to try to get some of them. Let's grab some nets. Ooh, man. Yeah, we've, we've snagged a couple already. You see that one, Sean? This one over here? Yeah. Yeah. How high? He's low. That guy is just buried in those green leaves, and he disappears. Greg, you in position? Yeah, you see me? Yeah, I see the net. I guess I'm hands on. Mikey, you got the net? Yep. All right, Greg. Iguanas can survive falls of as much as 15 meters to avoid capture. Maybe he'll come back and fall down through here. You're going to come down right there. There he goes. Oh, Jesus. He jumped in your arms, dude. Hey, dude, you're supposed to be telling me what he's doing. Y'all hit me in my face. Looks like this iguana locked out with his leap of faith. Put up the heads up. You got the same heads up I did, buddy. <laughs> he ran right down you. He hit me in my face. In no time, the wands lead the python hunters to another green. Straight up through there. You see the tail coming off the branch. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah if he hits one of these branches and hangs on, he's good to go. Going up? Yeah. All right. Because we want some room to work. One number two shows our guys how to get the menace moving. Yeah, he's moving up there. Yeah, it's like it. Good, good job, job good snag. Good snag. <laughs> Switch heads. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Yeah. There you go. How am I going to take you, lizard? That was a good catch, man. This is the same green iguana that's invasive here that we have invasive in South Florida. Yeah, it's a guana iguana found throughout Central and South America. And uh, this is the beast they're having problems with at the airport. This is not an easiest animal to grab. And you can see it why right here. Once you pull, they'll release that tail, and, and it'll stand there and wiggle like that, but they'll regrow it. Something grabbed the back of that right there and ripped it right off. And you can see where the regrowth is on this tail right here. That's a great defense mechanism for these animals. Another defense tactic is to play dead. That's why you, you don't move on anything. So the predators think that it's dead, and then they go leave it there. But the boys know he's secretly waiting to lash out. This is why it's so hard to shake out of that tree. Look at those sickle-like claws, yeah. you know? To so the wands guiding us here and going up the tree to shake this guy out. I think, you know, they've earned new names. These boys are the iguana wands. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> the iguana wands. Yeah. With one iguana snagged, the boys have to get back to business. We're just warming up. Let's get going. Yeah, buddy. Hey, there's another one. The guys and their Puerto Rican lizard hunting equivalents find a monster. There's a big male. Yeah, we got a male. It's a big coming, male. John? Right, right side, right side. Go right side, back. Like this. Take this, because you're going to have to poke. Ready? Yeah. Oh, 
Got him. Got him. Yeah. yeah. We all got him. <laughs> what the hell are we using these damn nets for? Woohoo! Hey. This guy's pretty feisty. Check this out. He's been wearing the girls out. Look at that callus. This is an adult male. This guy's ready to go. He's a bad boy around here, chasing all the other boys off and getting the girls. He's got a sperm plug. Look at this. A sperm plug is a jelly-like secretion males insert after copulation. It acts much like a chastity belt, blocking other suitors from fertilizing the same female. <laughs> I'm pushing you that way. Mike, what are you doing? I'm just... I'm on a... Don't push me. No! no, no he, he pushed me down the hill. You saw me. <laughs> All fun and games till so somebody loses a testicle. Iguana wands. You're doing good. <laughs> Onward and upward. We got more to catch. You gotta get him. You gotta the boys have another iguana in their sights. You see it right in top. Oh, I see him. Look at this. Right up the top of that yeah, tree. Exactly. Yep. Right there. Look at this. Right. Okay, he's shaking. He's jumping. Here it comes. He's coming to you. Oh, Grab the net. Perfect catch. Yeah. Oh, now that's that a was behind the back. That was. It don't get angry. That, that was that. behind the behind back. The back baby. <laughs> <laughs> As it came at Sean, he had the net like this. I looked right at Sean, and right as it was about to hit, he just closed his eyes, and it I just knew he was going in the net. I didn't know what this was going to do, so I was like, "Have you seen the net? Did he rip it? No. Oh my God! Look at this! Look at that! I'll be damned if the razor dorsal scales is going to lop my head off." We got three breeders that are out of the population, so they won't be adding any babies uh, this year. Every capture helps, since pregnant females can lay between 40 and 60 eggs per clutch. <laughs> Look at that, right up the top of that yeah, tree. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a big boy. Yep. Wow. Who's climbing? Juan. Oh, <laughs> Juan is you. He's a huge male. He's getting ready. Right. OK, he's shaking. He's jumping. Oh. Get him, get him. Yeah. If I got lucky, he just jumped on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the biggest yeah, one yet. That's the biggest one yet. His comb is almost the length of my fingers. That yep. is prehistoric as hell. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there's the claws. This male would be good to use for education, to show people. You can keep these as pets. It can be done. But the ability to handle and take care of this thing is far more than most people think. This is 10 pounds and five and a half feet yeah. of claws and teeth coming at you. You're part of the team now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> With an iguana under each arm, the guys call it a day. Well, I got to tell you, you guys have lived up to your new name, Iguana Wands. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to come in and, and uh, get a lot of these guys, especially away from the airport, where they could cause some serious injuries. Let's bag these things. We got to get going. All right. Yep. Thanks, guys. Hey, yeah. Thank you, guys. It. Not a bad day's work, boys. Not at all. Fistful of iguana. The wilds of Puerto Rico are packed with critters. But some end up confined here. Sergeant Atienza cares for thousands of animals each year. Many are confiscated pets or have been illegally smuggled and trafficked. Here's your mama. It's no surprise some are boas rescued from run-ins with humans. All these boas. So you have a lot of them. I sent uh, 57. Wow. Very They won't eat bananas, Michael. Holes very round in the trying to feed boas bananas. <laughs> but Atienza has larger animals in his care as well. We find this croc in a river. It has definitely got Cuban in it. Looks like a Cuban-American croc. Atienza, are you looking for a home for this animal? Yeah. I have just the guy right here. And to be honest with you, okay. I'd love for it to go to his facility because I'd like to see some blood work on this. Maybe we can find out exactly what it is. OK. Yes, I'm going to show you two. So he's tame, right? You can pet him like a puppy dog and? No. No, no. <laughs> there seems to be no limit to illegal trafficking. Somebody tried to smuggle a black bear into the country? No, we find this animal in the yard. So it was already in the country? Yeah. It was already here? Yeah. Clearly, there's no way that those people were equipped to have this thing just in their backyard. It just doesn't make sense. The Department of Natural and Environmental Resources spend a lot of money feeding uh, uh, big animals like, like this one. That's why we're looking for people in the United States that want these animals, and we send this animal for free. 
I've got a lot of contacts in the U.S. zoos and that, so, you know, maybe maybe we can put something together and, you know, help everybody out. I'm sure I'm going to call you. Yeah, Great. No doubt. Gracias por todo. Mucho gusto, ¿no? Muchas gracias. Gracias. Yeah. You're doing a lot of good here. Uh, maybe we can help make things a little better, too. Yeah, I think so. It's been a crazy trip, but it's not over yet. Ivan takes the guys back to the bat cave of Culebrones. The hunters suspect there's a large bat chamber deep within the cave, and bats attract snakes. I hope we can find those boas laying up on the lip of that cave, basking in the sun, and just, man, explore those caverns in general. The cave in the daytime is a mind-blowing phenomenon. This is our trail, guys, right here. Rain tree, broken twig, that's yep. it. And because the guys have special permits to handle endangered species, they want another close encounter with a bat-eating Puerto Rican boa. Our boa right up there is still there. Look at her. Awesome. Look at that. Again tonight, that snake will drop back down, do what it does. And when it gets too big to, to use the bats to sustain it, it'll move on to bigger and better things. Hey, Sean. I want that one. Yeah, let's go get that one. Let me put, let me put my pack down. So let's do it. Give me the rope. I'm going to tie it off on that big tree up above. Are you out of your mind? We've seen you tie a boat off. We'll tie the rope Give off. Give me the rope. Why, why don't you just tie it around my neck and throw me off the... Hey, I always wanted my own show, guys, but... Uh... <laughs> I got to tie my own knot, brother. I'm good with that. That way, if I, I break my own neck, it's all me. As Sean eases his way toward the boa, Mike takes his position as catcher below. He's tight in there, though. Yeah, he's blowing up. He's got the perfect cover, man. Look at that. Sean's always gentle with reptiles, but sometimes the feeling isn't mutual. Yeah. He has biting his finger. <laughs> this snake doesn't have venomous fangs, but it does have dozens of piercing teeth. Says, man, I ain't never had a bat do Oh, he got nailed. That's a knuckler right there. All right, you almost got him. There, there, there he is. There he is. Oh, he's too slick. I gotta... Oh! Yeah, good catch, man. Good catch. Good hey, job. Baby. Hey, he's musket. I think I tasted some. This is my actual first Puerto Rican boa catch. That is a gorgeous, Very, gorgeous it? animal. Awesome. Nice. Hey, if you don't get sick by a Puerto Rican boa, you ain't been to Puerto Rico. <sighs> hey! Don't molest mine. The mouth is jet black inside. I mean, it is awesome, like a mamba. The front, like, four or five teeth are elongated. When they bite into you, you can actually feel those first four teeth, top and bottom, kind of hook. Now you know what it feels like to be a bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! Look at that. Everybody you know. gets a turn. I'm telling you, if you haven't been bit by a Puerto Rican boa... Oh, hey, <laughs> brother! You <laughs> trying to knock me off the cave! You ain't been to Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican bite right there, baby. That was worth it. You know, I'm honored that he nailed me before. This guy is an icon for Puerto Rican conservation. We're going to put him back exactly on the ledge he was at. Right back into the same hole. He's home. <laughs> Teamwork, brother. Good looking out. Yeah. Ooh. Let's get down that cave, man. Another rope here. Throw it at my face. Let's go. I heard Mikey yell he found a boa, Sean. Whoa. They're heading where few have ever ventured. Visibility is almost zero here. Wow. Even with light. They know that where there's bats, there's likely to be more boas. Boa oh, guys, right here. You got one? You got one? Got one. But, whoa, 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 you gotta be careful running in here. Look at that belly full of bats. <laughs> one, two, three, okay. four. Look at that. Hey, look at that. There goes the musk. Oh, whoa. That's beautiful. But Greg notices something different about this snake. Guys, look at the difference at how calm these snakes are in the dark of this cave versus the snake we captured out in the sunlight. The snakes in here are a lot cooler, and they're a lot calmer to handle. Lights on, boys. It looks like another species wants some face time with Sean. Hey, boys. I got a friend. <laughs> Come on, Spidey. 
This ferocious looking cave spider can grow up to 23 centimeters across, but they're harmless to humans. And they sit just like this, and it's a trap. And as soon as their little sensory array picks up a uh, insect, bam, they just jam it into their mouth and eat it. It's like a, a praying mantis on steroids. Hey, do you mind if I hold it? I got to conquer my fear here. If they don't bite, you'll be all right. I mean, if you taste like <laughs> Here he comes. Watch out, brother. Now, these are lightning fast. He can make it from there to your face in, like, half a second. Yeah, you said lightning fast. That's it for me. I'm done. Come on, Ivan. Eureka. Don't like spiders. Ivan, don't fall in the cave. You see him? He's, he's yeah. on there. He's on. Uh, Ivan, oh, I know. Good off. job, boys. <laughs> you Woo. conquered it. You're going to feel the temperature change right in this step. Feel it? Oh. Oh, 182 meters inside the cave, oxygen levels decrease. One reason so few have ventured this deep. There's a bat right there. You see him? Oh, God, look at them. It doesn't really? have any hair on his face. Look. Oh, he's a baby, though. It's the, uh, the one with the big... The nectar. Yep. The nectar. Nectar bat. With 300,000 bats living here, there's plenty of bat droppings or guano wherever the guys step. This is soupy here, boys. Most people would probably die of a heart attack in these chambers. Oh, yeah. But the guys are like kids in a candy store. Look at the cockroaches in here. Oh, my God. Whoa. Look at those roaches. <laughs> that is awesome. The floor is just alive with movement. As the animal life increases the deeper they go, oxygen and visibility decrease. Yeah. Hey, gentlemen, I'll, I'll tell you right now, watch each other because the CO2 is building up. I can feel it in my breath. Feel that heat, man. It's got to be 110 degrees in here. They're now 244 meters below the Earth's surface and starting to burn up. Oh, this is oven-like. As the cameraman wipes the steam from his lens, Mike grows concerned. Sean, I can hardly get a full breath in here. I think it's probably time for me to turn around. No, it, you're still good. You'll feel some tightness in your chest. That tightness is your first indicators, but you tend to be OK. The guys are over 300 meters underground. Is this the chamber? But mucking through 30 centimeters of bat guano and fighting for every breath finally pays off. Hey, guys, you're not even in the bat chambers. Great. Are you ready? Yeah. Behold, here are your hundred thousands of bats. That is massive, man. Incredible. Yeah. Look at that. This is just absolutely amazing. Did I? Yeah. I thought for you. <laughs> you know what I love about this? It's just being the one that went the deepest into the cave. That's funny, because you weren't. Oh, I saw you try to duck your foot backwards. And just when they think they've seen it all. Too, so oh, uh, oh, my god, look at this. <laughs> Can you reach it? Look at that. Get him. Get him, you got to get bit. Wow. Nice. He's a little one, but woo! That's the endangered Puerto Rican boa. Oh, my god, look at that. He's got bats in him. Look at the bulge in his belly. Oh, yeah, yeah baby. I tell you, in all honesty, this cave, coupled with this highly endangered boa, this is a highlight of my travels. Hey, not to mention, you got the crew with you, man. No doubt. We finally don't have to hear the story. You lived it. That's right, That's baby. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Woo! All, all thanks to this guide right here. Getting too old for this. <laughs> As the hunters climb out of the cave... That's the one I pulled up on. Ivan loses his footing. Ivan, you OK? I'm coming to push you, Ivan. Stand still, OK? When he slid backwards, the rope caught loose in his hand and slid like that. And rope burn is just insanely painful. Rope burn right here. And I, it feels like dislocated the left hip. So we'll see if I can walk back to the car. But Ivan quickly forgets about his injury with the rush of this day. Hey, guys, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. I don't know if I ever will again. That was bad. Ass stuff. Get over here. <laughs> After the 43 degree sauna like heat of the cave, there's only one obvious end to this day.
You know what he's doing? He's freeing. He's urinating in our swimming pool. <laughs> Get out!